Hey guys, Ed Bird, and I'm back today with a casual shoe review for you of the Nike Blazer Low Leather. So a few months ago, Mrs. Ed Bird picked this one up for me on my birthday. A really nice gift in this white sail and green spark colorway. You know, I'm a bit of a shoe head as well as a running shoe head. So I was really pleased to get this one. Something a little bit different from Nike. A bit of a departure, you could say, from the typical praise of the hallowed Jordan 1. So today I'm giving you my casual review of this incredibly comfy shoe and a hard wearing shoe to boot. A few stats for you on the Blazer Low first. So I believe this one retails at about 79 pounds here in the UK or 79 earth credits. I find it relatively true to size, possibly a little bit longer than some other Nike offerings in the same size. So it might be something that you want to try out first Make sure you've got a good returns policy. If you're buying straight from Nike, normally they're pretty good with stuff like that. I think it's one interesting thing with this shoe. There are more eyelets down either side of the shoe, which I find gives a really good lockdown. You can adjust the lacing and get the lockdown over the top of the foot spot on. Even with casual shoes, I tend to lace them up, tie them up. I'm not one to have shoes kind of flapping around on my feet. That's just weird. But this one, a really, really nice addition to the collection. In my UK size 11 or US size 12, this one comes in at 426 grams, which I believe is about 15 ounces. So you're not gonna be running any 5Ks in this one. But of course, that's not the intended use of the shoe. A few features on the upper that I wanna discuss first. I really like the lower cut collar around here and the opening of the shoe. I find it gives the ankle a little bit more room to flex. It doesn't feel quite as constricted as some running shoes do. I tend to utilize running shoes once I've got through about 100, 150 miles for casual use. Uh, this one really does feel nice around the ankle. Feels quite low cut, quite welcome. The great thing about the upper on the Blazer Low is that it's just really easy to clean. I've been using these extensively over the last few months. As you can see, they've taken a bit of a beating, but they're really easy to clean up just with a wet cloth. You can just wipe over them and you soon get back to a, I wouldn't say sparkling finish, but a cleaner finish. Just freshens the shoe up a little bit. Water and moisture as well can just be wiped off after you've used them. Still looking fresh as a daisy. I think it's been a really good casual shoe for warmer weather. We've had some really hot temperatures here in the UK over the last few weeks. I find the tongue in terms of depth is a little bit on the thinner side, but it's ample in terms of its width. A really, really comfortable shoe on top of the foot. I also find the lower cut nature of the ankle collar means the shoe breathes a little bit. Your foot doesn't feel quite as warm. I guess the air's getting to more of the foot so it helps to cool it down. I'd also suggest it's one of the wider offerings in the Nike catalog right now. Some Nike shoes can be quite narrow. When I do talk to other runners about some Nike running shoes, they always say that they're a little bit too narrow for them and that does put them off purchasing some. The Blazer though, as a casual shoe, is a little bit wider, so if you're looking for something that lets your feet splay out a little bit, this could be one. Perhaps it's something to do with the older design back from the 70s, I believe this one's from, where things were a little bit wider, perhaps certainly wider than more modern offerings. So in the midsole here, we've got an EVA variant. I think it runs full length as well. I wouldn't say it's the most cushioned shoe that I've ever worn. And you've got an insole topping that just to provide a little bit of extra cushion. A nice low stack height here, though it doesn't make for a particularly light shoe. I think when you put together the hard wearing leather and the general build quality of the shoe, I don't think that it's something you need to worry about. It's quite a light shoe really as a casual shoe. Though still feels hard wearing, it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart anytime soon. Up against something like the Infinity React from Nike, it's certainly a little on the firmer side, but as a taller guy with very tired legs coming off a 100 day run streak, I prefer something a little bit firmer, certainly if I'm wandering about town, than the sort of out and out cushion or something like the Infinity React. I'm read about the upper. It says it's fused to the midsole by the use of an autoclave. I was really intrigued by that. I guess it means it's using pressure to push the two parts together, probably along with loads of glue and various other magic things. Slightly different construction to a standard shoe that I would review on the channel, but still a nice firm and relatively forgiving ride in the Blazer Low. Looking back, you know, the leather upper 
and a sponge-like tongue like that would have been premium materials back when this shoe originally released. That transfers to not only the midsole but also that rubber outsole as well. Obviously we've got all sorts of lighter materials these days but yeah, this shoe is a very vintage style. I found the herringbone bottom on the Blazer Low actually really good in wet conditions. I've been tasked with taking the old hound dog out recently, whereas Miss Ed Bud doesn't really want to be moving around too much right now. Still no baby yet. It's holding up pretty well over time. There's a little bit of wear in the outer section of the heel here. Other than that, it's looking good. It does pick up dirt relatively easily here on the outsole, though the pattern's not quite small enough to allow small rocks to kind of get embedded in there, which is always a bit of a pet peeve of mine. You know, the Clifton 7 and the Fuel Cell Rebel are still the kings of picking up rocks. I think there's enough protection here underfoot for casual, everyday use. I go on lots of different paths and gravel areas quite often, and the Blazer Low has been spot on for that. This presents a pretty good value option, actually. It's going to hold up pretty well over time. There's some good build quality. I've not noticed anything in particular that's letting the shoe down. Only minimal creasing here in the toe box where your foot flexes. That can often be a real problem, actually, in Jordan 1s. I've seen people get really upset about that, where their Jordans have creased up really badly. Um, this one's actually doing really well. Maybe it's these additional panels that they've added in. It just seems to minimise the creasing. That creasing really is a point of anxiety for many shoe masters. There are a couple of issues though that I have detected in the blazer low, and here they are. So after a couple of months, the laces are taking a real pounding. I've noticed that where I've tied the shoe up and untied it, they're starting to get quite fuzzy and a little bit frayed. I mean, it's nothing major. You could always replace the laces. I know some people, that's, that's taboo. You just don't do stuff like that. But it's just something aesthetic that you need to take into account. It's probably going to happen. I'd also say some people might find the shoe a little bit too long. I've got a relatively narrow foot and I find myself typically in a running shoe with Nike sizing right at the very tail end of a size 11. In this size 11 here in the Blazer Low though, there's loads of room in the toe box. It is quite a lengthy shoe. So you might want to consider perhaps going down half a size. I would suggest trying it out before you buy, which is really hard to do right now because you can't. I know a lot of people did report some rubbing in the heel area with the Blazer Low. I've not experienced anything like that. Really, really comfortable here. Just enough padding there. Not overly padded. It's just spot on. Certainly one of the most comfortable shoes that I've worn over the last few months. Certainly a favorite of mine, and it doesn't really look odd in different sorts of uses. Sometimes when running shoes in, in a casual way, it just looks a bit odd. And I like the fact that it's actually got some leather sections on it. I'm not sure of the quality or standard of the leather. If you wanna look at leather standards, then you need to go to Rose Anvil. So certainly the Blazer Low, recommended by Edbud. Thanks, Mrs. Edbud. If you've got any questions or opinions on this one, put them in the comments below. A musical interlude. Ages ago, I was really lucky to see the white stripes appear in Bristol. I think it would have been 2001, so about 19 years ago. And playing with them that day were a really great band called the Von Bondies. I picked up their album, A Lack of Communication, which had that same garage rock, very lo-fi feel that you would get with the white stripes. So the ideal support band. Jason Stolsteimer was even acting as a guitar technician that day for Jack White. Or was it the other way around? I think it might have been the other way around, actually. I think Jason broke strings and then Jack White bought on other guitars for him. It's very odd. That first album from them was actually produced by Jack White, but I think things deteriorated after a while between the two and I don't think they were on speaking terms a few years later. But A Lack of Communication is still a really great album to try and track down if you can. A little nugget in the history of the White Stripes. It came from Japan and Night Train are amongst my favourites on that album. Some really interesting guitar sounds on there. Do check it out. Thanks for watching through to the very end, people. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. It helps the channel out a huge amount as well if you give this video a thumbs up and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.